What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon with another episode of Extreme Gaming. Today I'm going to benchmark at negative 40 degrees with my face change cooler, the 10900K versus the 11900K. The same benchmark with World of Warcraft to fight for the last FPS in a Gryphon run. So I'm going to push the limit of the frequency for the two CPU and the memory as well, the ring, so a complete overclock to see what is best to score the maximum high average FPS in World of Warcraft. So World of Warcraft is a game that is really CPU bound, so it's a good territory to make uh, this fight. Uh, this is a series of videos, so I did uh, also the Ryzen 9 and the 11600K, so watch my previous video so you can have uh, a more understanding of what I'm talking about, and the video was also very funny, so check it out. And don't forget that I'm doing this uh, primarily for entertainment, so to have some fun. I don't want to make uh, a real world comparison or stuff like that, this is just to have some fun and maybe find some bottleneck where the bottleneck are to speculate uh, about the new architecture but well this is mainly for fun so let's get sub-zero all right let's start uh, with a real comparison i have set uh, the 10900k exactly uh, like the 11900k so uh, you can see here we are at uh, 5.8 gigahertz on all core i have the ring also at 48 uh, like the 11 900k, uh, same uh, uh, memory speed, so 3733, C14, tight timing, so we are exactly uh, comparing uh, clock to clock uh, and ring to ring, so it's exactly tuned the same way of, of the new one, so we can see at uh, the same settings uh, uh, the difference in FPS, so now we have to beat uh, uh, 265, so uh, the 11900K was scoring 265 in this benchmark. So now let's start the benchmark and see how far we can go with the older generation. There we go. So as you can see here, we are pretty slow comparing. So. My best guess is that we lose um, at least 10 to 15 FPS, so it should be like 5%, so maybe more, so between 5 and 10%, my best guess. So here we can measure the IPC improvement uh, over one generation. The lows are pretty nice, so, so far they are similar, but we have an average that is slightly lower. This is a tough zone, we have to wait until the end of the benchmark, but um, well, I've been playing around uh, all the afternoon to find uh, some good settings and to see some scaling. So now, uh, after this one test, uh, I'm going to show you this CPU with this type of cooling pushed as far as I can go, so 6 gigahertz. Uh, so we can see if we push the limit of the architecture at this temperature, this uh, old generation, how far we can go versus the newer generation. Okay, so we are almost finished. So 236, 238, and okay, 238. So 238 versus 265. So we have a, a good 10% here, even more, 12%. So yes, the IPC improvement in one generation is uh, nice. Uh, at the beginning, I have to, to be honest, at the beginning I tried this one, but the board uh, messed up in the memory and uh, I was really low. And I say, wow, uh, the gap in generation is very big. But then I solved the issue and uh, uh, yes, um, we have like advertised uh, when they do the, they do the presentation. So it's like 10, 12 percent IPC improvement clock for clock. Uh, this happened at low clocks and as well when I overclock both to insane frequency we have the same uh, distance between the two. So now what I'm going to do now is to enter into the BIOS and change uh, the settings uh, to the fastest I was able to. Okay so now second and final round for today I was able to push the CPU to 6 gigahertz 50 uh, ring the memory are 4000 megahertz c14 and tight timings so we have uh, an improvement of uh, 
200 megahertz uh, all over the front so 200 megahertz more in the core 200 megahertz more in the ring 200 megahertz more in the memory and now i'm going to start the benchmark and see uh, if we can scale a bit more same command time test one to make sure that the benchmark is uh, equal for all the tests we have seen we have seen so far so in route and let's go so i'm expecting now um, because i already did this test uh, uh, a good improvement but uh, as you will see soon the improvement is not as much as uh, we expected because well we are six gigahertz six gigahertz i mean is is a nice frequency then uh, uh, after this video i'm going to shoot uh, uh, with the 11900k with the cascade phase change so almost a negative 100 degrees so we probably go past six gigahertz with that cpu and probably this one can go i think six point or something like this so maybe I'm going to test again this generation and see how they scale they keep scale if they keep scaling or not uh, with low temperature and uh, if the frequency uh, give us uh, more uh, FPS uh, or we have bottlenecks somewhere so I'm really keen to understand if uh, from generation to another we have different bottlenecks I don't know if you get what I mean because uh, they change uh, how the, the memory and the rings works uh, so maybe uh, one will stop scaling with a certain frequency and another not so I want to check that as well uh, I know it's not practical but uh, it's good to know to understand more and to speculate with newer generations so okay we're almost done and stop okay so 238 versus 250 and this is, uh, is a good scaling because we are keep scaling upwards and well uh, the 11 600k same frequency and uh, well only 5.4 gigahertz was scored in 256 and as well with 133 megahertz less in the memory so yeah i think it's a good result so we are here at 6 gigahertz slower than what an i5 was able to do at 5.4 gigahertz so i mean this is a big result so uh, is not only another plus in the 14 nanometers uh, they really did change something interesting here and i'm only thinking about ddr5 so probably this new generation with ddr5 and some other improvements they will probably be able to do something really nice maybe not sure if they can beat a, a potential zen 4 but still they are competition is a good thing for us all right guys uh, at the beginning i wasn't so sure to make this test since i was thinking that uh, gen 10 gen 11 was more or less the same and was no point of doing this but at the end i was happy that uh, i did this because uh, we have a change in the ipc and uh, is very uh, big if uh, i keep tuning uh, the old generation versus the new with why it seems that the new generation have some kind of bottleneck but this is something that we may discover when i change from single stage phase change to cascade dual phase change so uh, now what i'm going to do is to change the cooling method so i'm going to bring the big one at uh, cool down this system to uh, negative 100 degrees and uh, start uh, making uh, another uh, series of video like this uh, so for today this is everything but now when i finish this i start benchmarking uh, the next phase so negative 96 degrees uh, the first video will probably be the same uh, comparison but with colder and then uh, maybe in the same video as well i will bring the Ryzen. so we have a video with uh, the uh, 10 generation 11 generation and the Ryzen 9 so we can compare uh, the latest architecture and see if they start uh, showing some sign of bottleneck uh, and after that i will go full liquid nitrogen so if you don't want to miss uh, this uh, series of extreme gaming videos uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button like the video if you like it and see you in the next one <laughs>